A lot of people, veteran winemakers in the Idaho wine industry, credit you for helping get them started. What, uh, I guess, why, why were you so helpful to so many people? Well, they all had big muscles. <laughs> I didn't have much knowledge back then, but I was like in place and going, and so I was, and they, and they wanted to get in place, and so I was like just a step ahead, and I traded their, their brawn. And, uh, you know, Greg Koenig, he's so strong, he could pick a whole 400-pound bin up and dump it into the crusher. We have a lot of old veterans that have been around since the 80s. Together, uh, we've changed a lot of the old blue laws and the laws that kept us out of business. And, and then we'd, you know, we'd spend a, a day wandering around the floor of the legislature, and then we'd go home and have a couple bottles of wine. And... and uh, and we've started things together, like the, the Mother's Day Festival. There are four of us that started that. We've always had fun. We've always been small. And, um, you know, we work together. We've traded labor. We've traded machines. And I'm the only old guy. I, maybe that's why they come to me, because I'm like 20 years older than anybody else. <laughs> we started our winery in, uh, well, by planting our grapes in 1982. So this is my 25th anniversary. When I first got here, this was all rock and, and just a pasture. It took me about 10 years, but we just terraced it and can't farm it, so we just planted grass and flowers. And we have lots of weddings here. We have a wedding every week here. First year we have Snake River Valley. Uh, Appalachian is, uh, we lost 90% of our grapes this year. Oh, no. <laughs> this is what happens. Uh, when you have a bad winter freeze, uh, only, the only thing that gives you your crop are these little buttons here, these buds here. So here I left three buds, one at the bottom, one here, one here. And normally I'd have three shoots come out and I'd have six clusters. And that's how we gauge our crop. You know, if we want two tons an acre, we leave fewer buds. If we want four tons, we leave more buds. And what's happened, these buds got frozen and, and they're non-viable, and they don't have buds any anything except on last year's wood. So, uh, you know, we're done for on this arm. And this is one of the reasons why in Idaho we always leave, we always make two trunks. And down in California, a lot of places where they don't have a lot of freeze dangers, they have one trunk and they make it nice and straight, and you have two arms or four arms or what have you, fruit arms. But up here, we leave two, and you can see yeah, well, you why. So we must have been really close to losing them and not losing them, because um, we we kept half and lost half. Well, most of the Pinot Noir is grown on this road here, on McDermott Road, and we have something here in our soil, and we think it's limestone. It's the the old caliche that gives us. A good taste for Pinot Noir. And it helps Chardonnay and Riesling and, and perhaps some other things too. Our soil is a lot different than what you've seen. you got the, the lighter, sandier soil at Sawtooth and then over St. Chapelle area you've got that kind of soil, the river fines and what have you, plus gravelly soil. And ours is heavy and uh, you know silty loam with with lots of limestone. I can't give you the statistics but I feel as farming out here for 25 years the temperatures have definitely gone up. The other thing I've noticed is um, that we've had new birds move into the area. <laughs> uh, for example, we, we have never seen yellow and red-winged blackbirds here, and they're all over the place now. And our lilacs are blooming earlier. <laughs>